This video is brought to you by Technically Not a Technician. In today's video, we will try replacing the computer power supply to see if we can get my outrun Mame Arcade back up and running. Will it work? Turns out, no. I also ended up changing out the motherboard as well. Spoiler alert! This is my outrun, arcade one-up main cabinet. I was able to get the cabinet at a great deal, and when I got this unit, I obtained it with the sole intent on modifying it. This main cabinet has an uncased desktop computer installed inside, USB ports access outside on the front, access to a standard Ethernet port on the back of the unit, and Wi-Fi. For those of you that saw my Simpsons build, you may remember me speaking about my nephew and godson, turning the power on and off again over and over again. Long story short the unit stopped working, and at this point in the video, I'm hoping that this is an easy fix. Real fast I want to point out that I used a ton of DIY videos on YouTube to help me in the build. For this build, I used a few video tutorials by Kongs R Us, and I'll be sure to leave a link to the Kongs channel. I'm guessing most viewers have heard of Kongs R Us and ETA Prime. If not check both of their channels out. Also, this outrun cabinet is using the Kongs power distribution system modification, and I highly recommend it. It's very simple to implement, effective, and streamlined. At this point in the video, all I really know is the main cabinet isn't powering on. So the first thing I'm going to do is check all of the connections and see if there's a simple fix. After checking over the AC electrical connections, I'm now sure that power is getting to the computer power supply. However, the computer is still not booting. This cabinet was a first for me in a few ways. It's the first driving main cabinet that I built or used, and this is the first arcade build that I used a Windows-based PC. I've emulated off of Windows PC before, but it had always been a laptop or desktop and never an arcade. This was also the first time I used MAME on a Windows-based PC successfully. Truth is I've used MAME for years off and on, mostly on RetroPie, and I still only know a fraction of what MAME can do or how to use it. After checking all the connections, I've decided to try and replace the power supply. I have an extra one, from an old PC that was given to me. I have no idea if it works, but I figure it's not going to work at all if I don't attempt to change it out. I feel like right now's a great time to take a minute and thank you all for watching this video, and ask that you like and consider subscribing to my channel. The more likes and subscribes I get the more this channel will grow, and more growth means more content. I'd also like to find out if there is anything regarding arcades, MAME, or emulation that anyone has any questions about? Is there anything MAME, arcade, or emulation related you'd like me to make a video about? If so please leave me a comment. I do my best to reach back out to everyone. When I first got this cabinet and I converted it to MAME, I had never tried to emulate any driving games using a steering wheel, and I've got to admit it took me a little to get the integration of the software and the controls right. I also didn't know MAME had to configure this machine option, and I was configuring each arcade one by one. For those of you, like myself, that don't know. The MAME software has a configure this machine option. 
With this option you can configure your control panel, and MAME will take that configuration and use it as a base for all the other games with the same controls. So for me, I configured the steering wheel, my pedals, and all of my controls, and MAME copied those as a default to all my other games. After that all I have to do is fine-tune each game. Arcade 1UP makes a nice cost-effective cabinet to convert to MAME, however real estate inside the cabinet is in short supply. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm having a hard time getting to some of our connections because of the limited space. It looks like I'm going to have to take the control panel and one of the front panels off to get to the areas we need access to. The computer that I currently have installed in this cabinet is a 4-core i7 and is running at 3.2 GHz. I've installed 8 gigs of RAM, and it has an old 2TB surveillance hard drive. I also installed an old GeForce graphics card. I tell you the model number, but I'm old, my eyes don't work well, the print on the PCB board is small, and at the time of making this video, I couldn't find my reading glasses. I do remember the graphics card had 2 gigs of RAM, but I couldn't tell you if it's DDR2 or 3. Needless to say, I'm very impressed at how well old hardware can emulate these arcades. When the unit was running with the forementioned hardware I was able to run the Sega Model 2 and 3 emulators very well and Techno Parrot ran like a dream. Those emulators, MAME, and only the highest quality ROMs from the best ROM farms really made this outrun MAME cabinet hours of fun to play. Just kidding everyone, we all know you don't get ROMs from a farm, but wouldn't it be kind of cool if you could? Yeah, now that I've said that out loud it sounds stupid. Just disregard the ROM farm idea. The fact is we all know that ROMs come from well-thought-out keywords in search engines. If you understand what keywords to use, and where to use them, you can find almost anything. Search engine analytics are just funny that way. I can remember at this point thinking I was going to be able to change out the computer's power supply, and my cabinet would boot right up. After it booted I was going to demo a few games, maybe show off Mario Kart DX. Show off all of the versions of Daytona USA I was able to get working. Really take this cabinet for a spin, and show off some of the hard work I had done. I've got to admit that I was getting kind of excited to get this cabinet back together and powered up. The unit had been downed for a number of months and I've been unable to play it or work on the software for some time. When this unit was still working, I had a track mode running as a frontend for loading games and it worked well and seems to meet my needs. I love the fact that a track mode is free to use, works on tons of operating systems, and once you learn how to use it, a track mode is super configurable. I also use a track mode as a front end for my HTPC. It works well when launching app shortcuts and shortcuts to web addresses. Again, once you learn how to use a track mode, it becomes very configurable, but there is a small learning curve. Enough about a track mode, it looks like the extra power supply that I have is underpowered, not compatible, or simply does not work. That's kind of the issue with old used parts. When you get used parts, you just have no idea what you really have. At about this point right here in the video I still believed it was a power issue. I believed so strongly that it was the power that this is me ordering a replacement off of Amazon Prime. I'm not really able to do much more to the outrun cab right now. All I can do is clean up and wait for the new power supply. Side note. I have no idea how many of you see the SR-71 in the background. I've had that rocket for over 20 years and it's older than my kids. I think I was about 21 years old when I bought the thing. I built half of it and it sat in a box for years. 
Once my kids got older, and my nephews became a large part of my life, I dusted off some of my old rockets and bought a few new ones. The kids and I have built a few and shot them off. Tons of fun. It was around that time that I finished the SR-71. Truth is the thing has never been shot off. The kids and I also bought a mean machine rocket. If you're unaware the mean machine rocket is over 6 foot tall. Very simple to build, and the kids love that it's oversized. We had to get creative to launch the mean machine, as we did not really have a launch pad that was large enough for a rocket that size. Turns out getting creative when launching an oversized rocket is a bad idea. The mean machine took off more like a cruise missile. The rocket headed toward a church across the field we were launching from and smashed into the parking lot. We were very lucky that's all that happened. Good times. Now all I can do is wait for Amazon to deliver my new power supply. Cool thing is, you nice people watching from YouTube don't have to wait. Because of the miracle of video editing, it's only going to take you a few seconds. And, boom Amazon. I've got to admit, Amazon has a nice business model. It took me like 5 minutes to find what I was looking for, and it was delivered to my house the very next day. Kind of awesome really. But guess what? We find out kinda soon that it's not a power supply issue, meaning we don't need this power supply. As I said, we find out soon that it's not a power supply issue. But at this point in our video, I again think this is going to be kind of short. I'm just changing out a simple power supply after all. Well, in my industry we always try and avoid the word simple, as it seems, when the word simple is used, the issue is always a little more complex. Right at about here is where I figure out that it was never the power supply. Turns out that it's got to be the motherboard. Totally sucks to suck right now my friends, but sometimes that's just the biz yo. At this point in time, I kind of want to just pack up and watch Netflix, however life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we react to it. I could totally pack up. But instead of doing that, I'm going to take the opportunity and now make a few videos. This was just going to be a short repair video and demo, now it's going to be a ton of content. I figure I can get this video about fixing the basic hardware, we could do one about some of the software, and maybe even one regarding port modifications. It's going to be fun to see what happens.
I'm still in denial here. As you can see I'm trying another plug. I really need to admit that it's the motherboard at this point. And now I must come up with a plan. I've already spent 40 bucks on a power supply, and I totally don't need it. Should I buy a replacement board, or should I use some random crap I have at hand? Random crap will be quicker, as I have it on hand, and cheaper, again because I already have it. So random crap for the win. Regardless of the random crap we will be putting into this unit today. I'm going to need to remove the motherboard and figure out how to best place all the computer parts, as the new motherboard will not be a direct replacement with the same footprint. So our first step in replacing the motherboard is removing it and a few of the other PC parts. I also want to take a minute to talk to you today about my channel. I like to be very blunt, and I hope that's okay. I'm literally making up everything I'm doing here as I'm going. This is a really young and new channel. I'm a very active person, and I need to tinker on stuff. So, I figured why not post some of the stuff I work on to YouTube. I don't have any real camera equipment, in fact the camera that I am using is from my old phone. I think it does an okay job for now. I don't have a studio or any sound equipment. Nothing cool like that. All I have is a ton of open source software, some cheap sound software, and a positive outlook on life. All in all, I want to thank you for checking out the videos I've been making. As I learn and pick up better camera and sound equipment I hope the videos get better and I hope people find them both helpful and entertaining. The two things I will be unable to promise is that my acting will ever be any good, and I will never look like a supermodel. Okay, so first there is about 20 minutes of this video missing, I may have had the camera pointed too high. So we have disregarded that video as most of it is of the back of my head. With that out of the way I wanted to talk about the operating system that I will be using. As I've stated earlier, I am going with Windows for this build. This version of Windows is new to me. This version is called Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. Windows 10 LTSC is a very streamlined version of Windows 10. It has no added options as far as software, and the general public doesn't have a ton of access to it. If you can get a copy, I would recommend doing so. Because it is so lightweight it can really bring new life into some of your old machines. LTSC stands for Long Term Servicing Channel, and this OS is intended for computers that serve a single purpose. Like a kiosk. A MAME Arcade, much like a kiosk, serves one purpose. And like a kiosk, we will not be using the OS as an operating environment or a normal keyboard and mouse to use the computer. We will set this computer to boot, and as soon as it does, it will launch a track mode, and we will use the steering wheel, pedals, and buttons to navigate, use and interface with our system. At the moment in the video I am basically learning that the motherboard that we are using only supports legacy booting. It took me a minute to move on from this point because I'm hard-headed and I felt that I needed to try everything I could before I simply put the image on a DVD. However, I do end up doing just that. I also want to get back to the LTSC copy of Windows that I'm using. I also have an older Nook that came with Windows 7. 
I got this computer second hand, and when I went to install a new hard drive in OS, I found that you're unable to install Windows 7 on it out of the box as Windows 7 doesn't have USB 3.0 drivers built into the installation media, and the Nook doesn't have any USB 2.0 ports to boot from. Anyways, I installed the Windows 10 LTSC and it runs like a dream. I have been looking all over for this Quake 2 CD. I don't know if any of you played Quake 2 back in the day, but I ran a small Quake 2 OSP tourney server, and it was awesome. For real, I lost this CD months ago, and I'm glad to have it back. This next little bit of video is just me installing Windows. There isn't much to see here. If you want to skip ahead, I would totally understand. At about 23 minutes and 10 seconds, we start getting cool again. the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need a bank no i'm funded play the game like it's nothing i'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror and be is no friend to me it's not working now maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so i can make a better me better believe in your mind because it's everything you can mold shape find all For those of you that didn't skip, this is the point where I said it was going to get cool again, and for those of you that skipped welcome back. My last PC had some USB ports off of the old case that I integrated into this build. Unfortunately, the old parts don't fit the new motherboard. In order to fix this, I'm going to have to remove the old USB hardware, and I'd like to install the USB hardware from this board. Right now you're watching me remove all of the hardware we will be using from the old case. I will install as much as I can today, and we will make a video about these mods as I go. I like to take pictures of where each cable plugs into. This makes it easier to remember where each cable needs to be plugged in at. This isn't really important for most of the cables as we all know how to identify the common ones, but it is helpful with front-facing USB ports, power buttons, and things like that. Let's talk a little about the replacement computer we will be using. I think I got this computer about 10 years ago, from a local second-hand PC shop. When I can, I try to always get my computers second-hand. I do this for two reasons. First, I'm kinda cheap. Second, getting them from a second-hand shop helps the people in the area I live, and I get a good deal. So, I look at it as a win-win. I'm not really much of a hardcore gamer any longer, and I find that I can do most everything I want to do on older hardware, much cheaper. 
I mean for the love of God, literally everyone saw me find and recover my Quake 2 CD. Anyways, I've digressed. This replacement motherboard comes off of an old Dell. The service tag is 2JNFJS1 if you would like to look up the specs. This unit is a dual core 3GHz. I've got 8 gigs of RAM installed that I pulled out of the other unit and that same GeForce card I spoke about earlier in the video. What I need to do at this point in our repair is mount all of the hardware. I'm going to mount the minimum at first as I don't wish to mount everything only to find we have an issue and I have another item that needs to be replaced. I don't think that will be the case here, but I like to be safe and test things out before I make them permanent. Keep in mind that I got this hardware from a second hand shop, I've used this computer as my personal desktop twice, and now the motherboard is going to spend its retirement as a MAME arcade. A driving MAME arcade at that. Kind of cool when you think of the life cycle of a computer. I guess you could say I've gotten my money's worth out of this old girl, and I'm really glad I can give the computer some new life again. The replacement motherboard we will be using is smaller than the unit we had. The truth is not only is the new board smaller, but the overall computing power on the replacement board is less, and we will have performance loss due to that. I'm really hoping that Mario Kart DX still works well. I guess we will find out. Because the replacement board is a smaller size than the original, I will be moving each computer device around in the cabinet for best placement. This can be kind of a pain in the butt, as it is a balance of fitting everything in, and being able to service the unit after you have built it. I want to point out that when doing these builds, I look at what others have posted, how people have mounted computer devices in main cabinets and arcade one-up cabinets. I don't think there is a real right or wrong way to pull a motherboard out of a computer case and mount it into a cabinet. Basically, I make it up as I am going, keeping in mind device fitting, cable length, and as I said earlier being able to service this unit after the fact. When I am using a computer with forward-facing USB ports, I do my best to integrate those USB ports into the build and at the front of the unit. This helps when I need to plug in a keyboard or if I need to plug in a jump drive. Not to state the obvious, but arcades don't come with places to mount motherboards, so I use little plastic standoff mounts. They work really well, and I'll be happy to link that part in the description. I've used those mounts in three of the last four builds I've done, and they work great. The only reason I didn't use them in all of the builds is because one of them I used an old form-fitting warehouse PC that I had, and as the case was so small I mounted the full unit into the cabinet. For this video, we will only be mounting the motherboard, installing a graphics card, and mounting the power supply. I'm hoping in a future video that I'll get to also mount the two-port USB hub to the front of this outrun cabinet, and the donor computer also had an SD card reader. I'm not sure if mounting that would be extra, as I can't really come up with a practical reason for having an SD card reader built into my arcade cabinet. I may just use that reader for an HTPC build.
And boom! The computer has booted up, and it seems to be working as designed. Now we will finish mounting the hardware, and we will be hooking up the USB controls that will let us integrate the original OutRun controls into our main computer. As you can see, we will be getting creative when we mount the power supply and hard drive, and we will be using the L brackets that you just saw me present. If I'm not mistaken those L brackets came from my grandfather's stock of extra parts. I love the idea of utilizing and bringing life back into old dusty items, and it's kind of nice to think that something from my grandfather was used on this build. Using the L brackets to mount the hard drive and power supply helped make this as simple and as easy as eating pancakes. Let's now check the power supply and make sure it is secure. Everything looks great so far, now we will tighten a few screws, clean up a bit, and just do a test run of main real fast. the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need a bank no i'm funded play the game like it's nothing i'm always thankful for something don't take for granted stay humble now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror if he is no friend to me it's not working out maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so i can make a better me better believe in your mind because it's everything you can mold shape find Okay folks, it looks as if we have succeeded in doing the following, found out that our issue was never the power supply, but in fact a bad motherboard. We also have no idea what on the board went bad. We removed the old board and all the old PC components from our main cabinet. We reinstalled a working motherboard, we reinstalled a power supply, a hard drive, and we reconnected the control panel. Not a bad day's work if I do say so myself. Let's turn her on and see if she will boot into Windows. If all goes well I'll load a main game just to test it out. 
When doing this repair, I kind of got in a hurry, and I didn't make a copy of my arcade files and programs. I know it's a noob mistake, but I'm going to look at it as an opportunity to make a few videos about setting up MAME, and some of the other emulators, and also a little attract mode set up too. I think it should be fun. First, I know the screen resolution and the aspect ratio are off. I'll fix that later. This happened because I set the main computer up on a widescreen monitor. I also want to point out that the arcade controls have been physically hooked up, but I haven't done anything with the software. So this main demo is going to be super short. I promise to demo more games on a future video. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Please remember to like and subscribe.